Now I'll just go back to my project media tab because what I want to do is I want to do a quick import of a video file to get a project started. Now this isn't going to be the main project that we work on throughout this course. I'm just simply showing you a quick method of doing this just so that we can get started. Now there is a variety of ways of doing this. I could have used one of those buttons or icons that we've just spoken about or as I'm going to do here, I could use my menu bar. I'll go up to file and then drop down here. I'll drop down to import and then fly out to the right to where it says media. And then all I need to do is choose the particular video file that I want to bring in and then click on open. And so now once that's been done, I'll see this thumbnail view here. Now at present, this is only brought into a project. It's not actually on my timeline, i.e. it's not part of my project in terms of what we can see yet. But if I double click on it, then it automatically gets sent to my timeline. And there you'll see it down on my track list at the left foot of our screen. And of course, it's there on our timeline. Now, of course, there's going to be much more on this later as we progress. I just simply want wanted to show you how easy it is to do this if we want to very quickly get started. Incidentally, that's what we do when we want to place the full length of our movie clip on our track list and associated timeline, but we might not always want to bring in the full length of a clip. Maybe we only want a portion of our clip, maybe because with this video file there was a lot of talking by the audience in the background, which we don't really need. Well, what we can do then is, well, where this thumbnail is, left click on it and drag over to the right here into this window. And this is our preview browser window. Where we can trim our video footage prior to sending it to the timeline. Now, as you can see, this window does contain many buttons and we will get to see these in operation as we progress. Just for the moment, we're only interested in setting what's known as an in point and an out point for this clip, i.e. we're going to trim away excess footage from this clip that we don't want to use on our timeline. And to be able to set an in and an out point, well, it's very easy to do. Just place your cursor first of all along here on this preview timeline where you want to set your in point here, for example, and then come down to this button. This allows me to set my in point simply by clicking it and then now move my cursor to the right and then click on this button. And this allows me to set my out point. As a consequence, just this area here, this middle area, this is the only part of this clip now that will be sent to our timeline. I've not deleted the beginning and I've not deleted the end in reality. That still exists on the real clip. All I'm doing is providing an in point and an out point as a reference so that Sony Vegas knows that this is what I want to bring into my timeline. Well, if I do want to send what we have remaining in the middle, then down to our track list and by association, the timeline, then I would click on this button here. So this small section of our media would be placed on our timeline. Now, I'm not going to do it just for this overview tutorial. I'm just simply showing you how it's done. We'll probably see this quite a number of times as this course progresses anyway. Moving on now, that's the monitor that we use when we want to make any edits prior to sending the footage down onto our timeline and building up our project. There is another monitor as well over to the right. Once we've started building up our project with lots of different clips and parts of our clips and start building them up and sending them to the timeline, then we will see in this main monitor here exactly how our project is built up, i.e. which sections are on show before other sections. Well, this monitor allows us to see our edited project in progression. Now, because we've only got this one video clip on at the moment, then that's the only video clip in this main monitor that we can see. But of course, if we'd got many clips populating our track list, then by moving our cursor or our CTI or our playhead or our tape head, call it what you will, to different positions along the timeline, then you will see in this main monitor the particular clip at that point. Now that deals with the visuals, but you'll notice also just to the right when we are working with audio as well within our movies. And of course, that's what we want to do when we are building a music video. Well, you'll see this audio level meter as well. And of course, this gives a readout of our audio playing back. And then right at the bottom right of our screen is this status bar. And this gives us information about our particular files and more relevantly about our project. Now, if we move back to the bottom left under our timeline and our tracks there, well, here you'll find our transport bar control area. And then finally, at the extreme bottom left, well, you'll see this area here, and this is called the scrub control area. 
What this allows us to do is left click on it and drag to the left or to the right and we quickly scrub through our video clips on our timeline wherever our CTI is at that moment. OK, by clicking and dragging we can edit with precision across a clip. OK, so that's a quick run through then our user interface and where things are. We'll leave it here then and we'll progress and use some of these functions in a bit more detail in the next tutorial.